put your hand in your chest and say, peace. Ah, but remember, there are, there are these positional things. The kingdom of God is a positional issue. You need to understand the position issue. Because you see, peace in typical spirituality depends on what's going on outside. And that's the trouble. Most of us are looking for peace in the middle position. Oh, when I get money, I'll be peaceful. <laughs> when I finally get married, I'll be peaceful. <laughs> I'll find peace when all my troubles go away. And so you live a depressed Christian life, waiting for the miracle. Hmm? We are changing that. We, we are understanding how the kingdom of God operates. Is God first gives it to you. Then he works it in. Yeah. So let me give you a key verse. And then we will move forward. Romans 5, 1 to 2. Let's do a quick Bible study here. And download peace into this room. Next Sunday you must be here. Cancel your wedding postpone whatever, be here because we need to touch joy. Oh my God. <laughs> now, somebody read with me. One, two, three, go. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. <laughs> huh? Having been justified. Peace does not come from sanctification. It comes from justification. And I need to immigrate my peace from sanctification to justification. You need to move your stuff. In fact, what we are trying to do is move our entire life. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. faith here. The just shall live by faith. So we need to move our money here. We need to move our peace here. We need to move our marriages here. We need to move our children here. Everything must be moved from process into this place which is a breakthrough experience you must get as a believer. Otherwise, you are going to be struggling like Elijah and Moses, stuck in processes of spirituality. So I believe as are constantly fasting. There are people who sweat in the Lord. Sweat, 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 sweat. We need to change something. It will happen. You will know it when it has happened. And I tell you, the things that are happening to me now, I can't tell you. I'm not permitted to tell you. But things have accelerated at a terrifying speed. Since I began to more clearly understand the difference between position two and position one. So, shall we read it again? Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Tell your neighbor, I have peace with God. Yeah, that includes while you are still working on your stupid habit. And while you are still married to that crazy husband or wife. And your children are going mad. And you're trying to sort your stuff out. There is peace between you and God. How in the world can that happen? How can God treat a drunkard with honor? How can God allow us to enter his presence when we, we cast everybody at our workplace last, last, last week in a temper tantrum. Born again. Name written in the book of life. But you, 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 you flipped and went, hey, hey, and you went crazy at work and <laughs> saying, mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> I don't agree. That is this thing here. 
That's, that's you manifesting your sanctification problems. But while you are working on your sanctification, I still declare you righteous. Hmm? So, do you understand how mind-bending it is? We clean up because we are clean. That's the issue. <laughs> we clean up because we have been declared. It's not progress. We are not progress. So you are a graduate, and now you are sitting the exam or reading the subject. Yeah. Jesus, this is so good. It is not easy, but it's good. And according to the parable of the sower, most people miss it when it is preached. The Bible says it falls on wayside and you are too compacted by life, too trodden on and too beaten up that when this stuff comes, you feel, amen, pastor. But you don't understand what's going on. <laughs> so the parable of the sower shows us four responses to the kingdom message. That's the kingdom message. That some people don't get it and they continue their Christian life. Start growing everywhere in the world. Think like this. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. So tell your neighbor, stop being arrogant. You are too late. Too late to justify your prayerlessness. Too late to justify your alcohol addiction. Too late. To say you can't pray. You are too right. Because your stuff was put on Christ. Hmm? Yeah. And that's why the Bible says that the case in heaven has changed. It's not going to just be your sins. It's going to be what did you do with the Christ. The problem now is what did you do with what God provided. Yeah. That will be the case. It won't be, mm -hmm, tell us who you, you insulted. No, no, no. That is now the product of you failed to embrace justification. God made a way of escape. And you rejected it. Yeah? So we've been justified, my friends. We have peace with God. It is so crazy that on the day you have so annoyed God, you can approach him. It's a contradiction. Because me, I know, when you annoy me, I need time out. I said, give me three days. And let me first get over this. <laughs> you understand? I don't know, some of you are worse. You need a lot more days. So, when there is offense, you can't handle people. But God says, come boldly. Come, fall into my presence. And let's reason together. Though your sins are scarlet, bring them here. Come into my presence. Let's talk over this rubbish. Hmm? Lift up your hand and say, I have peace with God. Eh? You understand? Now, the beautiful thing is when you have double peace. The peace of justification and the peace of sanctification. That one, now we are going next level. Because from there we are talking glorification after that. That's what we explained last time. When, when you know that you can come into the presence of God because of the provision of Christ, but that you have not held back your obedience, that adds the second level. And now we can flow in the real blessing of God. Really, really, really. We can go to the highest level. Okay. Let me try and go through all these many verses that I want to go through. I think you've got the point. I can even sit down. Now, look at Matthew 10. Somebody first say peace. Peace! peace. Come on, guys. You have peace with God. That's where it starts. You start with peace with God. Before we talk about whether there's peace in my home or with my children or in my finances or at my workplace, we need to resolve the horizontal issue. Yeah, and the horizontal issue, according to, God, to, to Romans, is resolved. Hey, my God, God is on my side. 
God is on my side. He's not fighting me. I'm not at war with God. <laughs> I am not at war with God. Amen. Yes. Yes, there's trouble in my home and there's things that have to change in my brain and my manners must, in, must change. But God is not trying to kill me. Yeah. That's a beautiful place to start. Yeah. Matthew 10, verse 9 to 13. Jesus sends out the 12 to minister. Matthew 10 says, as they are going, he says, provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money bills. Mm -hmm. No bag for your journey. No two tunics. No sandals. No stuffs. For a worker is worthy of his food. While Jesus is commissioning us into kingdom ministry, he says, need any supply. <laughs> when you are on, hey! Provision should not be a worry. Provision I need according to his and attend to the mission of God, supplies will not be an issue. Yes. He tells disciples, don't, don't take a belt, don't take sandals, don't take two. Do you understand the level? Who des Do you understand? Some of us walking around saying, I'm not worthy. Yes. No, no. Jesus said, you want to hide? No, 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 no. no. The person that I have declared you to be, yes. you are a blessing in the earth. You are a transformer of environments. You are a breaker of destructive powers of darkness. It is a privilege for anybody to welcome me. Hey! Come on! Come on! Come on! Yes. Oh, this is recovering from stuff. Recently, I walked into Canary Wharf, the tower. And you see, when you enter, you immediately feel like you are illegal. Some of these spaces are intimate. The volume of this place, the reception looks bigger than life. But what is that tower called? It's number one something. Canada Square. One Canada Square. That tall, the first one that was built. You need to identify you and somebody must be waiting for you and you have a barcode. High security. Have you ever walked into it? Intimidating scissors. Ask whether there's anyone. Viewers will think. So Jesus is not agreeing with your nice humidity. <laughs> ask, ask whether there's anyone worthy and stay there. Hmm? And listen to this. Listen to this. I'm taking too long. Next verse. And when you go into a household, greet it. What is the greeting of the Jews? Shalom. Peace. Greet it. Next verse. And if the household is worthy, let your peace come. And if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. It's like invisible cargo that you carry. Eh? <laughs> huh? Don't bring your turmoil. Don't walk around the earth distributing the turmoil of, of your issues. <laughs> That's what God is saying. According to Jesus, you carry a cargo called peace. It is in there. And some of you are so accustomed to the storm and the turmoil. You are experts at stirring up your own storm inside you. You are a walking tornado of unresolved issues. But the peace of God that surpasses all understanding dwells within you. And Jesus is commissioning, even Judas is part of the, the guys he's talking to. He's saying, Judas, when you enter a room, say, Shalom, and your peace shall come upon it. Hey, Judas. Hey, tell your wife if you are next to her, I am peaceful inside. I just need to learn how to manifest it. If you... Come on, come on. So, 
I have learned to stand on world stages yeah, and stand as a, an agent of peace. Not this survival peace of, eh, eh, I had breakfast and I'm okay. No, 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 no. I don't know what's going on. But according to the mission of God on my life, I must stand on this platform and speak peace over a thousand people. And they are looking at me, saying, Pastor Lincoln came from London, and Pastor Lincoln is there saying, hey, hey, at home, I need to service the car. Forget the car. Forget mortgage lenders, and forget tax people who are looking for you. Stand here, justified. Justified. Declared, declared by God to be an agent of peace. Do you understand? Is anybody hearing me? Liberty, can we do this? Can we do this? Because this is discipleship. This is what discipleship is. Discipleship is learning to do kingdom. So it's not about just MCs and eating together and playing together. If we are not going to enter the kingdom, we might as well go back to Egypt. Can I move forward for time's sake? So, before Jesus gives disciples power, he gives them peace. Because power in the hands of unpeaceful people is a dangerous combination. It's like giving a gun to a mad man or an angry man. Before God talks peace, a power he talks peace. You find it here. There's no talk of power there. He starts with peace. He says, then stay there. Then he says, heal the sick. After peace. So you cannot carry more power than you carry peace. Peace is the foundation of power. Do you see even righteousness, peace, joy, power, peace first. After righteousness, the next challenge is peace. Now ask your neighbor, how do you score on the turmoil scale? Out of 10, how are you? How troublesome are you to yourself? How much of a civil war is raging in your heart and in your brain? <laughs> uh, God has given you peace. So today we dethrone turmoil and, and confusion and, and pain out of our minds. We have the legitimacy. Isaiah 9 verse 6. What's the time like? Where are we? Where are we? Okay. God help. Give me speed. Isaiah 9 6. For unto us a child is born. I want you to understand the priority of peace. Unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Mm -hmm. Next. And his name shall be Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His presidency is of peace. His, his prince, princely function is peace. Peace. My friend, peace is more important that, than you know. And today God gave me authority to disassemble your misery and to rebuke your depression and to challenge your capacity to generate trouble in your own head and your heart. And to know God gives you permission to rest. Blame it on me. Blame it on me. You go home saying, Pastor told me not to worry. And to put on peace, that, that to allow the peace of God that resides in me to manifest. Because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. And if he lives in you, why is there so much chaos? Shake it off today in the name of Jesus. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. John 20, 21. I just need another verse. John 20, 21. Hey! Someone's financial life is changing. Amen. I sense it in the spirit. Amen. I sense it in the spirit. Let my friends, if you feel something, just catch it. 
just catch it. Don't wait for your neighbor. Yeah, don't wait for your neighbor. And you need to do something when you feel it. You need to stand up or raise a hand or clap or do something. Don't wait for some. John 20, 21. Jesus said to them again. This is Jesus appearing to the disciples after his resurrection. Peace to you. When he appears, he doesn't say power to you. Yeah, the power is coming. The problem is what is it going to sit on? What is it going to sit on? Before I send you to the upper room to tarry, I must speak now into your heart and deposit something foundational, something that sustains and makes authority and power safe. Because a powerful depressive is a problem. Hmm? A powerful, angry, irritable, irritated person. And then you give them a gun. And ranks. And deploy them into the earth. Trouble will break out. Peace has to come first. Jesus said to them, peace to you. As the Father sent me, I also send you. That means the first commissioning of Christ is peace. Prince of peace. And we need to go somewhere with this. Allow me to preach a little. And then he breathed on them. And he said to them, whomsoever you forgive, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. I won't even go there. People. People are the peace killers and peace thieves. Relationships. Relationships. So Jesus immediately deals with the relational issue. He says, in the context of this peace, you need to learn how to function in the ministry of forgiveness. Yeah. Because it is people who take your peace away. Have you noticed? You're minding your own business. And then somebody comes and steals your peace. What are we going to do? God's prescription is learning to release people. They are time wasters. Because the devil is a peace thief. He knows without peace you can't go far with the kingdom of God. He knows while you are still standing as a jail, or a, what are they called them? Yeah, you are, <laughs> you are in charge of the jail. There are so many people in detention in your life. You have no energy left for anything else. You are too busy running a jail. You have so many prisoners. Some are on life sentence. Some are serving two, two weeks sessions. Uh, you, I'm not talking to you for two weeks. I am unfollowing you, and I'm deleting you, and I'm blocking you. You are too much of a jailer. <laughs> to function. <laughs> so he breathes on them and says, guys, peace. Step into this thing. It, you will notice your children, your husband, your wife, your boss, everyone is trying to take your peace away. And the decision has to be made today. What's the date? 24th. Tell your neighbor, will you, you have a talk with your, are you willing to release all the prisoners? For them to go scot-free. No trial. No, there won't even be a trial. The trial is canceled. The judge is dismissed. I'm going to release all the people who have offended us because we need to steward something greater than the offense that they brought into our lives. We need to steward the peace of God that surpasses understanding because it is the foundation for the kingdom of God. It's one of the four pillars of the kingdom. Oh, but pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. I know that I don't know. But the scriptures tell you, my friends, that before the wind comes, you need to catch the breath. And the breath says, peace. Close your eyes a second. Close your eyes a second. Today, I dismantle the turmoil and the worry 
and the anxiety and the panic that has been presiding over you. In Jesus' name, I uproot, we agree to uproot the spirit of worry and turmoil and confusion. We decide to install and to allow to explode inside of us a peace of God that surpasses all understanding to guard our hearts and our minds that the kingdom of God may break out in our lives. Therefore, Father, we release people who have offended us. It's difficult, but we, we open the jail doors. We let them walk away. Because something more important needs our attention and our energy and our focus. Do you receive it, friends? When the angels sang, remember the day Jesus was born. Angels sang. What was their song? Glory to God in the highest. This is Luke 2, verse 14. On earth what? Money? Power? On earth? Peace. Peace. This is the song of the angels. <laughs> and if it was me writing, I would have said glory to God in the highest and on earth money. <laughs> and breakthrough. No, they say peace. Because if peace can settle, the rest will follow. Peace and goodwill towards men. Wishing people well. Peace and goodwill towards men. Jesus, give us peace right here. I need to take it to a more dangerous place. See, when Jesus is sleeping in the boat, he's making a point. When the storm is raging, and they wake him up, Master, we are dying, wake up, I'm going to die. And he wakes up and he, he doesn't even speak, to he goes and says, peace. He doesn't even say, no, he just says peace. His peace goes upon the waters. Like Jesus said, well, peace be still. You will. Can we speak peace over each other in the name of Jesus? Peace into your home, peace into your environment. I don't know what the devil has been hatching and incubating in your space, but today we speak shalom into your life, shalom into your career life, shalom into your marriage, shalom into your domestic scenario. In Jesus' name, Jesus woke up and spoke peace. And then he turned around and said, where is your faith? Where is your faith, you guys? Because faith cannot function in a turmoil-filled heart. Somebody says the storms, storms in life form when there are contrary forces. When warm, moist air collides with cold dry air. No, warm, dry air collides with cold, moist air. When the two pockets of air co collide, that's where storms are generated. Contradictions. Contradictions are what causes storms. And it is said, a storm continues to rage until the forces which created it are neutralized. Yeah. Something has to bow. And so rain is dumped and winds blow because there's a contradiction in the conflict. Jesus gets up and says, okay, it's over. Bang, he is the storm neutralizer over your life this morning. I want to close with the ministry of reconciliation. Ha! You guys, somebody said reconciliation. Reconciliation is when warring parties are brought to, to agreement. When two conflicting forces are resolved. 2 Corinthians 5. And I hope this is my last run. Are you ready to take back what belongs to you? 2 Corinthians 5, 18. Thank you, Jesus. Now, somebody say now. When? When is it? Now. Say it like you believe it. Now. Hey, say it like you believe it. Now. now. All things are of God. What is all things? All 
All things are of God. All. All. Somebody say all. All, all things are of God. What a dangerous statement. Ah, somebody has caught it. Somebody has caught it. All things are of God. What a powerful prophetic statement. Are you kidding me, Pastor Lincoln? There are some things in my life, they are of the devil. They are of witchcraft. Now, all things are of God. All. All. For God shall cause all things to work together for good. For those that love him and are called according to his purpose. No need to say, no, I need to understand. Who did this come from? Where did this come from? This is witchcraft. This is the devil. This is my brother. All things, somebody shout, all things. I don't know whether you are hearing me. All things are of God. I am summarizing the mess of my life. And the questions of my life. The good, the bad, the ugly. The resolvable, the unresolvable, the mystifying, the, the confusing. I'm putting them all in God. Hey, is anybody with me? All things are of God. I am turning my focus on one person. I am not going to study the witchcraft of my family. And the anger that my judge and my uncle directed at me, I'm not going to study anything else. I'm going to turn my face and my focus in one direction. All things are of God. That's why in the Jews, Jewish tradition, even the devil belongs to God. Even sickness comes from God. Even it, it is God who makes the blind. It is God who makes the lame. That is Jewish perspective. All things are of God. I refuse to give anything too much glory eh, that I target, that I allow its space in my life under a different tag. Eh, did anybody catch me today? Somebody shout, all things in my life are of God. Keep the verse up there. Keep the verse up there. Don't take it down. Somebody pray in tongues for a second if you can pray. Say, All things are of God. Oh, pastor, you don't know what I've gone through. All things are of God. Pastor, you don't know they were trying to kill me. All things are of God. Pastor, you don't know how many miscarriages I've had. All things are of God. Pastor, you don't know how much. All things are of God. Don't shit to describe to you what happened and who did it and what means of life. You do not need some and how many people gathered. This is how ministry is done these days. We seek prophets to demystify where the demons came from. I don't need to know where they came from. I just need to know who's casting them out. I just need to know who's casting them out. All things are of God. Why? Who has reconciled us? Past tense. He is not in the business of it. He has finished it. To himself. Through Jesus Christ. Hey! Hey! Huh? When I say hey, you are supposed to help me. Hey! <laughs> He has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. How did he do this? Huh? The cross. The cross. The cross. He took one who had no difference with him. Who had no quarrel with him who had no issues with him. There was no distance between the father and the son. And God swapped him for me. And suddenly Jesus is saying, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani, what has happened? Jesus, wait a minute, I've got to find Lincoln. I've got to turn your, my back on you because he has to see my face. Do you understand? 
that God had to abandon his son to find us. He had to start a war with his own son because he was looking for us. And this was not for the saved, for the whole world. For those that will never confess him or serve him, he did it for every one of us. He reconciled. It does not say he will do it when you confess him. No, he finished it. This is a finished deal. Forgive me if I'm shouting too much. Allow me to get passionate. Hey! Reconciled us to himself through his son. Not through a headache, but through a slaughter. A slaughter with blood gushing. And you tell me, oh, they slaughtered three chickens. Three chickens. Three chickens were slaughtered over your, witch, your, your spell, which was done in some... I'm sorry to keep going into witchcraft. There's too much of it in my community. People, Pastor, they killed a whole animal. Can you believe they killed a cow? A cow? Are you comparing a cow to my savior? Are you... <laughs> Do you know that God went up the mountain like Abraham took Isaac and put him on the altar and lifted up and, and God said, don't do it. Don't do it. Stop. Because I am going to do it myself. On the very same mountain, Moriah. Jesus carried the cross to become a blood sacrifice because he knew the kind of issues we are going to go through we'll need, we'll need more than sweat we'll need more than word it's blood my friend hey ah you are not helping me yet hey hey God was in Christ reconciling us to huh where is it? No, 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 no. Through Jesus Christ. And has given us a ministry of reconciliation. Go, go to the next verse. That is, God was in Christ reconciling the what? The Not the church. The whole world. Including my drunken father. Not imputing their trespasses to them. God is crazy. God is crazy. He said, no, 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 no. They did not sin. It is I who sinned. Hmm? It is I who committed that sin. It is I who did that. Let me put it on myself because one of us has to die and I can't let it be you because you will not rise again. <laughs> huh? He put it on himself. And it is not fair that he dies for it and I still carry it. Not imputing it to them. And has committed us the ministry. He says, now go, go. I have done it, now go do it. Hmm? He has committed us the word of reconciliation. So our message to the world is they are already reconciled on the other side. God has removed all enmity between him and man. I am so sorry if that confuses your brain. What will send people to hell is not enmity. No. <laughs> It's the fact that he paid the bill of reconciliation and it was rejected. That's what stirs up the fires of hell. That somebody purchased such a great salvation and we, we can't get it. We, we miss it. We don't declare it to others. But God finished it in Christ. There is peace between us in him. And him in the heavens. 
Now he says, now please go tell them. Go bring them. Bring them as they are. Bring them as they are. Hmm? The word of reconciliation. What is reconciliation? Removing difference. Removing difference. Now, my wife, come here, my darling. Now, I told you every morning I first watch her dress. Because I say I need to find a color in my shirt which shows we came out of the same house. It's not always possible. It's not always possible. But you see, I'm trying to be the same as her. I'm trying to reconcile. Remove difference. Remove difference. <laughs> you understand? What is ministry? The Bible says he has committed to us the ministry, the word of reconciliation. When I speak to a blind man and say, in Jesus' name, your eyes be opened, I'm reconciling. Because God is not blind. It is not about, oh, I would like to see colors. It is not about colors. It's about the fact that he is not blind. He is not depressed. So when you come here with your depression, I must reconcile you to him. You understand? When you come sick and he is not sick, there must be reconciliation. So God was in Christ reconciling the word to himself. Everywhere he went. Dead people, get up and walk. Blind eyes, open and see. He was reconciling. Hey, can you see your reconciliation? Stand to your feet. We have to close this service.